Hector, uh, who is uh, uh, who has been speaker at Ibiades in the past, but now because we are in your hometown, uh, right? We really want to celebrate your <laughs> your uh, your and your work on the the Met, right? The, the Met APIs as you are managing it with uh, all the partnerships. So if you are able to share your screen, yes, with, to hear the talk in your hometown. Okay, so can you see my presentation? Not yet. You have to uh, click on the you know sharing screen button. Okay, got and, it. And then after you choose application or Windows or full screen. I see it. Okay. And then uh, you decide what you want. And uh, okay. And then after it should work. Yeah, we see your screen. So it's, it's perfect. Okay, okay. Well, fantastic. Welcome fantastic. again. Okay, sounds great. So um, I just want to say hi, everyone. My name is Maria Kessler, and I'm from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I am honored to be here today, and I thank you and appreciate you for your time. So let's jump in. So I'm going to start with the Met's mission. Our mission is to collect, study, conserve, and present significant works of art across all time and all cultures in order to connect people to creativity, knowledge, and ideas. And that connection to creativity, knowledge, and ideas is at the heart of my API Days talk here today. So I know most of you have heard about the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I certainly hope that this New York crowd has been to visit. If you haven't, I just wanna share a few things about the Met. We're located in New York City's Central Park. We have gorgeous architectural features throughout the building. We have 2.2 million square feet of gallery space. Here we have the Temple of Dendur, as well as our Greek and Roman sculpture court. And we've been dedicated to education since our inception. But at the very heart of the Met is our encyclopedic collection, which spans over 5,000 years of art and culture from around the world. Now, an encyclopedic collection really just means we have a huge range of subject matter in our collection. So we have bowls and vessels of classical mythology. We have various representations of Buddha and other Buddhist deities. We have furniture, we have animals, we have still life, we have satire, we have period rooms, we have petrified bread and mummies from ancient Egypt. And we have artifacts and depictions of historical events. And then we have depictions of the human figure and all matter of materials. We have over 1.5 million art objects in our collection. And if you do visit, we only accommodate about 4% of our collection in the galleries. Online, we have nearly half a million art objects with an associated 670,000 images online. If we're to fulfill our mission to connect people to creativity, knowledge, and ideas, if we're to be a museum of the world, about the world, and for the world, we need to make our collection accessible to the 4.3 billion internet connected people on the planet. Now, a good way to do that is to work with partners and partner platforms because they can extend our reach to new audiences on a global basis. So, Central to that is our development of an open access program and our API. Our open access program is the release of all of our public domain images and data under Creative Commons Zero License. So this is really just a notice that we're waiving our copyright claims to the images and data. We launched this program in early 2017 with about 375,000 images. This was available on our website and through a CSV file. Now that's a great first start, but if we really wanted to work with partners and partner platforms, we knew that an API was the true solution. So we started working on our API in early 2018, and we had a great idea of how we wanted to architect it and what we wanted to launch with. But then we had an opportunity to work with Google Arts and Culture, and they provided us with a real world use case. 
So Google Arts and Culture is a platform that has a number of museum collections from all over the world. We had been working with them for about seven years and we'd only managed to upload about 700 images. So it was in both of our best interests that we'd, we would work together on this project. So we worked with them to build a basic schema to import our open access images using our API. So when we launched our API, they launched the integration of our API on their platform and went from 700 images to over 200,000 in one upload. So we did launch our API in late 2018. And when we did, we had over 205 thousand distinct art objects with over 406,000 associated images. We also released all of our data fields, uh, which were both uh, Creative Commons Zero as well as copyrighted works. So finally, we had this massive content and we had the means to work with partners and partner platforms. And we had just proven that we could integrate well with the third party platform. So we were all set. We were going to let the dust settle just a little bit. We also were working on a subject keyword data set, and we wanted to put that into the API. We didn't have very much time because just a few weeks later, Microsoft approached us and asked us if we wanted to experiment with artificial intelligence. We said, sure, we were very interested to explore how AI would work with our data sets as well as this new subject keyword data set. So we jumped at the opportunity. We also um, included some uh, great thinkers from MIT because of course you want some great academic minds in the room to keep you honest. And the goal of our collaboration was to work with our API, um, AI, as well as our subject keyword data set to make new connections to global audiences. And after two days of a hackathon and then a few weeks of prototype work, we actually had a party, a reveal party at the Met to share five of our prototypes. So here you see uh, two of our prototypes. The first one is Gen Studio, which took two disparate works of art from different times in different geographies and let generative adversarial networks run an interpolation of what might have been in between because we don't know what hasn't been discovered. And then on the other side, you see my storyteller app, which was really a basic storytelling application. You could create your own story uh, through voice activation and it would generate artworks from the Met that related to your story. And you could do this in one of 10 languages. Here are the other prototypes. We had a MyMet story, which was based on Instagram images related to a Met art object. And then we had artwork of the day, which used open source uh, historical news and paired that also with an art object. The, on the right hand side, you see a wiki art depiction game, which generated subject keywords based on the subject keyword data set that we had and it created more, and then we crowdsourced this with the wiki community to let them verify the accuracy of the subject keywords. This was very useful to us because um, we were able to take some of the data back as well. So here, this was an amazing collaboration. It opened our eyes to what was possible with our open access collection and what was possible with our API. And as soon as this collaboration concluded, we were approached by another team at Microsoft. This time they wanted to explore a search prototype. So we jumped again at the opportunity because this time we were using cognitive and visual search to explore our open access collection. So you could start at a painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware and within a few short clicks, you could actually get to a sculpture of Minnehaha by the female artist, Mary Edmonia Lewis, who is both of African American and Native American descent, one of the first female artists to rise to international acclaim. 
So this was just amazing. You could find new connections through our, you know, open access collection. It was an exploration tool. It was fantastic. It was also uh, great because it spawned a Bing visual search skill that was available to developers. Here's an example of a partner platform where our API helped facilitate a process. So again, we had been working with Pinterest for a number of years. We upload uh, images to pins on a weekly or monthly basis, but it was very manual. It was five at a time. But using our API, we worked with Pinterest to develop a, a process where we could upload anywhere between 100 and 1,000 images at a time. Now, the Pinterest community is very creative. It's uh, aligned with our mission of creativity, knowledge, and ideas. And one of our most recent uploads included a number of our ball gowns from our Costume Institute, as well as period shoes, purses, as well as a number of period furniture as well for inspiration. So we were very pleased with this. We saw a number of pins as a result of this, as well as additional referral traffic back to us. So we've also had academic collaborations. Education has been at the core of what we do, um, but traditionally it has been in art history. So we've seen this radical shift since we've had this open access collection and our API, and now we're working with groups in, in big data and technology. So it's been, it's been opened up a whole new audience uh, for our collection. So last fall, we worked with two classes from Parsons School of Design. They approached us in their data visualization studies and they asked us if they could work with our API and our open access program, we said, great. We invited them in. We uh, taught them a bit about our collection and some of the data intricacies. We then met them for their uh, midterm work and then at their finals. And here you're seeing uh, one of the students works in Arms and Armor. He um, saw the evolution of armor, armor and weaponry across time and geography. And here's a landscape generator that explored all of the landscape paintings at the Met. And then you also see um, a representation here. Uh, one of the students looked at all of the religious art that we had and associated it with the different stories in the Catholic Rosary. So we loved this collaboration with Parsons. The, the students gave us direct feedback. Two of the students were very interested in working with female artists, but we didn't have that information as part of the API, so we gave them the data. But I will tell you, we, that is one of the enhancements we made to our API. You can now, there's now a filter for um, artists designated as female where it's available. Um, it was also a great feedback from them about you know, some of the things that were in our data that we didn't even know, or they brought you know, new creativity and their own perspectives to our data. So it was a great learning experience for us. I, I do want to tell you that our API is open. It's public. There's no key to get in. We did this on purpose. We did not want to create authentication without a clear need to do so. We wanted experimentation, so for us, this was a validation of exactly what we had hoped for. We've also worked with um, colleagues in the data science community. We worked with a team at the University of Virginia in their Data Science Institute. They used our API and machine learning to create an AI image detection model based on artworks. And then we also worked with a team um, from Visipedia and New York Cornell who headed up a Kaggle competition. And in the competition, they used our API and machine learning to accurately predict the, or the cultural origin of artworks based on fine grain attributes. I know that's very heady. However, there were over 500 teams. We thought we'd have about 20. There were over 500 teams that participated in, participated in this challenge. 
So they had a challenge last year and they did an expanded challenge this year. And again, all of the feedback that we got, all of the learning that we got through these interactions has been incredibly helpful. In fact, based on their feedback, we've now added controlled vocabularies to our API. We've added the Getty Research Institute's uh, union list of artist names, as well as the art and architecture thesaurus. These controlled vocabularies allow for interoperability with our API with other collections and other APIs. We've also, through the work we've done with the wiki uh, data IDs, we've added wiki data IDs to our API as well. And this is really fantastic because it, it's on the wiki platforms, it makes it accessible to machine um, access as well as over 80 active languages. So again, if our goal is to be you know, globally accessible, this is a great way to do it. And we're, we're actually uh, pursuing our mission. Here's another example. Clio actually uh, approached us right after our API uh, launched. And they asked us for just the collection in our Egyptian curatorial department. And we didn't have it. So we, we did accommodate that and we added department as an endpoint in our API as a result of this. And it's fantastic because now we're one of four collections. And if you're a researcher or a student or somebody just in, interested in Egyptian art, this is a one-stop shop for Egyptian art and uh, to dig really deeper into the collections there. And again, this was public feedback. So we've We've learned from our partners, we've learned from public feedback on GitHub, and we're using all of this information to constantly update and enhance our API. We've also done an integration with Creative Commons into their image search. Creative Commons has a mission to display and make accessible all public domain images. And so we're one of many collections on their site and we're very happy to uh, be aligned with their mission as well. So I just wanna review that, you know, we are API is on metmuseum.github.io. We've done a number of different collaborations over the past several months. Each one of them has been different. They've been useful. They've been tremendous fun and we really hope that we will see more works. We don't always know who's using our API because it's public, there's no key. However, we're often delighted when someone contacts us and lets us know that they're using it. So if you do plan to use it, let us know how you're using it. Um, we constantly update our API. We think we have a unique API in our field. We do update the data in our API on a nightly basis. And we also have a dedicated team who's um, dedicated to these collaborations, to taking in feedback and consistently enhancing the API on, on a periodic basis. So here we are at the Met. I should let you know that we are planning to open. So fingers crossed that we follow uh, government, uh, local and state and federal government plans to open on August 29th. But I really wanted to say that we could not have imagined all the different creative um, ideas and projects that have come from our open access collection, but we could predict that the API would be the catalyst, the launch pad for all of this creativity. And I do hope that what I've shared here today will connect us to creativity, knowledge, and ideas for centuries to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you for uh, this talk. Uh, um, I, I, it should it should relate to a lot of attendees here uh, um, uh, about New York. So, so a quick question about uh, um, you know like the, the the partnership. How the the fact you have APIs makes the partnership simpler, or you know, how it makes it more easier the discussion. So it, it does help things. So again, a lot of these collaborations that we have done, um, they, we've been approached by these different organizations. 
Um, the API is open, anyone can use it. However, it, it's a little bit of an access point in. So if you're using our API, certainly our marks are you know, not free. You, know, you would have to come to us and license our marks. However, the API is there for exploration. We want people to ex experiment. So it sometimes is a, 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 foot, a foot in the door is a good way to explain that. Um, and, you know, we love to see this integrated. Um, you know, you can use our API to integrate in video games and uh, lots of different things. I'd love to see some uh, masks using our artworks. Yeah, for entrepreneurs, actually, now that you have a business, right? Uh, Met mask, right? Yes, <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, Met, like Met Design, uh, with, with uh, Met, Art of the Met. Oh, also a question about like, uh, that we see about the success. So you said that you don't monitor because it's uh, completely open, but let's say, uh, how did you see or how can you uh, imagine the impact on the visits? Because uh, at some point, you know, there is this famous quote, why everybody goes go to the Met? Because they, are, they have heard about it, right? Yeah. Uh, they right. have all heard about it, so now they want to see it in real and may ha they may have seen the thing in digital. So in the future, how do you think you will try to relate the two together? Well, I, I think that, you know, people consume um, media in all different ways. And, and quite honestly, you know, it's, it's up to everybody who wants to use it at any point in time. But just like, you know, consuming um, a book, you, you do it electronically or you get the actual book itself. And I, I have to tell you that it, it's different experiences and it's what you're after. Um, you know, standing in front of a painting, standing in front of, you know, Washington crossing the Delaware or, you know, uh, the Gubbio Studiolo is just phenomenal. You, you can't replicate that experience. You can't understand how really large this particular, uh, the Washington crossing the Delaware painting is until you're actually there. But you can experience it, you know, online and you can dig deeper into the collection. People experience things in lots of different ways. And certainly for the people who could never visit us, we want to make our collection accessible. There, you know, who knows what's going to spark the new, the next best idea. And we hope we have, you know, some, you know, part in doing that. Yes, yeah, some famous, uh, um, let's say, uh, art philosophers say that in the 60s when the photocopy, you know, when the, uh, when the printers and photocopy was there, I say, oh, my God, like now we can reproduce art at, for cheap, not, not art, but let's say, you know, a copy of it and to scale what, what, what they would say now we have APIs, right? You know? I Absolutely. Look, it, the more access you have, the more creativity that you have. I, you know, this is not a not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And there are lots of other museums, you know, joining the open access program and creating APIs as well. We're hoping that we're going to collaborate and there will be interoperability between some of these APIs. That will only, you know, further knowledge. That's a great thing. Yeah, thank you for making art, uh, to democratize the access to art, thanks uh, to an open API, an open and public API. Thank you very much, Maria. It was You're really welcome. Nice to have you at the API in New York, but next one we will be on site. We will be there. Well, that sounds same. great. Yeah, and maybe okay. with some uh, uh, art design uh, met mask. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Thank you, Maria. Okay, have a good thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. And so, uh,